So what, what I want to do now is, um, Brian, where are you? Right. I just want to know. So, I'm um, so I want to I want to go through some drills. So we're going to talk about Ashi Garami. Okay, Brian, come on. So Ashi Garami, for those who don't know, uh, is leg entanglement. So you like it. Leg entanglement. Uh, you know, like Udagarami. So Ashi Garami. Ashi means leg. Garami, I think, must mean entanglement. Leg entanglement. And this is the basic position of it. And so you can see the foot locks, you know, foot locks and stuff. So this is the basic one. Um, and now, and most, if you look at all the old Japanese Jiu Jitsu books, and all, or, or Judo for that matter, I mean Jiu Jitsu, you know, before it became Judo, um, this is the, what you'll see. And you'll see it from lots of positions. Um, you know, when you've done a single leg, you can take him down a single leg either way and get this position from a single leg. Um, you know, when you're standing up, you can escape them out and end up here very easily. So you can end up in this position from, from lots of different areas of the game. But obviously, you can see when it's gone and, and it's right there, it's a very easy thing to, to get. So, um, this is Ashigarami for the football position. Now, there's basically three things I think that I'd like you to know. <coughs> One, the basic Ashigarami, we're going to call it that tonight. Inside Ashigarami, which is see what I've done. So I've taken my feet from here, made a hole by lifting my hook here, and put this one over in the hole and under my other foot, and turned to my wrong hip. Illegal in IBJJF, but it exposes the heel and gives you the heel hooks. Russians like this stuff. So a lot of the sambo guys, the Russian wrestling sambo, all like this because on paper it's way better. And the reason it's better is in in this way here. He can eventually pass and come through because he can come through once he clears my foot off. Does that he can start to come through that hole, and so he can make his way on top. Okay, and also I've got to watch out. And one of the first things I was ever told: you never heel, never foot lock someone taller than you or greater. <laughs> <laughs> so, because if he's taller than me and we have a foot lock race here, the taller guy will win. So there's there's some limitations with this. The upside of it is it is the easiest. You'll get it from everywhere. So that, I think this is this is a primary a primary way to learn it. I should run. Secondary is like high school is the Russian way, which is like that because my feet are now not exposed and he's exposed. All right, putting legalities and illegal, I don't care about that. Thing. So so that's so a lot of the Russian guys will go. What are you doing that for? You should be doing this. And the highest level V today, Gary Tone, Cummings, and all those guys. They actually do fit on the outside. Which you have to know what you're doing here. Because he has every opportunity I have. And if, we, if I do this with his foot, we call that 50-50 guard. For obvious reasons. <laughs> every opportunity I have is the same as him. So if we're standing up and we wrestle like they used to wrestle back in the day, every, and he, we've got exactly the same position. All of my opportunities are his. Pummeling. All of my opportunities are his. So that sucks. All of that sucks. Um, and you, you don't want to willingly enter into a situation where everything you can do, he can do. Unless you're better at it. <laughs> right? So I just want you to understand. If you're better at it, then you want them to get into that. Your state Greco-Roman champion, let's tunnel. Right? Uh, so it's not 50-50 if you're the better guy. So that's why people look at Eddie coming. I'm just giving my opinion. Stone or anything. Um, but people look at those guys and go, oh well, well, they're doing it, must be good. No, it's good for them because that's all they're doing. <laughs> and you don't want to be getting into that contest with them. You'd be better off getting into the legs inside contest. You see what I'm saying? So I would, here's my view. Basic, primary level, basic Ashigarama. Secondary level, feet inside. And each one, by the way, has got lots of stuff to do. And uh, we call it tertiary, tertiary, feet outside. But I do that if you want. So that's the way I see it, the way I map it out. Okay? So what I want to do now is uh, talk about the, the uh, Ashigarami, the basic one, and then we'll go to the secondary one. Okay? And I won't bother with the outside one, mostly because I'm no good at it. Uh, meaning I don't claim any, I don't claim any expertise. 
actually, but I, I certainly don't say that I am good at this stuff. This is the worst part of my game. Um, and I know the least about it. Um, but I still know more than some of you guys. So, so, <laughs> well, so, so I, I can teach it. Um, but, but I certainly don't know a lot about the outside one. I mean, I can bluff my way through it and show you some things and you go, oh, well, cool, but I will be doing you a disservice. So I'd rather wait until I get some instruction on that, and that's what I want to think I'll be asking you. Or you do it, and then you don't. Okay. okay, so feed outside will be cool, right? Um, I know some basic things, but that's the, that's the higher, higher, higher level. So we're going to talk about the basic one and the inside one, and, and, and the relationship that has to leg bars. Right, so, and I think leg bars should come first. We're going to tick that box a little bit tonight, and we're going to go to the next. So if I was teaching Tashikarami, this is the way we're going to do it. We're going to have uh, guillotine grips on each foot. And I'm going to have my knee inside and my heel on top like that. I'm squishing. And now I'm going to go swap it. So watch. I'm going to turn the hip. Okay. So from here, I'm going to roll. I'm going to do the ashy grinding on the other foot. Right. So we're just doing, getting used to the position on either four. So here's what I want you to do. Because you can do that about three or four different ways. So one, the leg that's on top, I can take it out now because there's a the room. So I take it out, I turn his hip, and I put the other one in. We take it out, we turn his hip, we put the other one in. Okay, so that's one of the first drills I ever learned, and I think it's a really good start to just be comfortable with getting it. And then, if it was a class on Ashikarami, we would try to then, once we did that, do that from uh, mount escapes, from guard passing, from single leg takedown, from you know, from as many different positions as we could to just find more ways to get there. And learn from that, right? So we'll just start with that first, because I want to I want to give you four drills now. We're going to go off techniques for a minute, and I'm going to give you four drills that, if I had my time over again, I think these should have been the very first thing that I would have liked to be taught before I went down the path of doing all the footballs and stuff. I didn't learn it in this order. This is, I'm giving you what I would consider a much better order than That's the way I'm approaching all my seminars now. If I had my time over again, and we're doing a seminar on crucifix, what, knowing what I know, how would I order it now? What, what, what would be the first crucifix and why? And I need to have a rationale to back that up. So that's what I'm trying to do now, rather than just try and get things out. So we were talking about that today. Alright, let's go. So one person. You see that's the same drill? It's exactly the same. The only difference is he's standing up. Okay. So we're just getting the, the, the legs the same. And just like an arm bar, we don't want to do that. We want to get the hip up. <coughs> we, don't, we don't want to touch him and then get the hip up because he'll push it. So we want to go up the hip and then clamp. Up the hip and clamp. Guys, you might want to do Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll, just to start off with, if I have my feet inside, I'm winning. It's like pummeling. It's like double underhooks now. See? I've got two underhooks. So he puts his feet in. He's winning. I'm winning. He's winning. And now 50-50. So that'd be like pummeling, right? So now it's like every option that I have, he has. Now I'm winning. Now he's winning. Now I'm winning. Oh, thank you. So that's just that's something I remember he been teaching us that we're sitting there doing this, you know, and pummeling our feet. And whoever got to the inside got the Ashigarami, so there's that. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. So I want to do the next drill, which is uh, in normal Ashigarami. Feet come to the outside. All right, so my feet to the outside. Back to this one. Inside Ashi. Normal Ashi. <coughs> feet outside. Now, when my feet are outside, I'm winning at the moment because I'm on my right hip. Um, if, and especially if it was like that, I'm really winning. He's cool. But if, you, if Brian turned the hip this way, now his foot's protected from my exposed. So it's, again, I'm, I, I don't want to talk too much about it because I, I, I would be doing, perhaps doing a little service because I don't know as much as I should know about this position. 
but I know this much. I don't want to be. I want to be on my right side. Um, so I've got. To, you've got to understand that this is in danger. This, this leg here. So I want to protect it with my other foot. Now you can you can protect it this way, like like a full-on triangle, and protect it. Um, but then you can attack this foot. So the the, be, the best thing I can say to you is, is that I see I just put my foot, my right foot on, and press on top of my left foot. So whichever one he grabs, grab one of my feet, I just keep with the other one. Keep with the other one. So in other words, your defense becomes this. Okay? And if you if you look at um, guys at a good level, they're doing that without thinking while they're attacking the other guy's legs. And no one takes any notice of it. Because it doesn't look like anything. But they're really good at that. Like a guy who's great at boxing, makes the punch, misses, and everyone's concentrating on how he's hitting the guy, but not all the magical stuff making the numbers. So I can't, because if it was just do this position and you'd be right, I would tell you. <laughs> but there's going to be pros and cons. So, so, so what I'm saying is just get your feet looking after each other. But I don't want to say much more than that because honestly, I, I'm no good at it. Um, so, that being said, when, when I have got it over, my outside foot is just blocking it. So now it's protected. And if you happen to grab that one, the other one's ready to protect that. So they're both right there. And then we go inside, okay? Now, watch how I get the inside one, which is what we're going to concentrate on tonight. I use my hook. This is hook here. We make a hole. And then, then we turn our hip and we thread the other foot over and under my other ankle. So obviously now, I don't have to worry about that. My legs are cool. Here's the one with the problem. And I'm going to make it way worse. Um, so, but that's the basic idea. Uh, you got it? And, so, and Sorry, I lost the position. And then, and then from there we go back to that one, and then we go to that one, and then we go back to that one, and then we go to that one, and then we go back to the basic one, and then we go to the outside. So we're doing what I call the triple. So that's just gonna, it's just, I'm just trying to give you a, like a small, like a, like a taste, you know, sample. Like, this is the different world. So then when you see something happening, you go, oh, right, it's, yeah, John from the on the outside, that's what those guys do. Gary Cohen, Ryan Bodycomb, every Sambo and Russian on the planet, they'll have their feet on the inside, Begin and Bigger J guys, Jiu Jitsu, they'll have their basic action home. But I, at least this way you can kind of, Make a start. So we just do that triple drill. And also it gets you rolling your hip. You'll see when like, you feel it on your knee, you'll go, oh shit, you fucked it up. Go over there. You see. Okay, let's go. <laughs> see it. Ashi do Ashi standing. The triple. Okay, so now we're gonna do the first one that's gonna look like a technique, but it's not gonna, it's gonna be a drill. Um, this this is the one that's stuck in my head the most. It's good um, so we're going to start out with the, sorry, the ashi, and then we're going to go to the inside. And now, what we're going to do from here is he's going to do the escape. Right. Now, normally I would not do that. Like, normally <coughs> I would teach a move and then teach the escape, because no one would do the move, because they think the mate knows the escape, because there's one loses. But for this, it's important, because we really do need to inoculate ourselves against the danger here, because these things are dangerous. And that's actually my main motivation for doing them on the map, is actually not so that you get really good heel hooks, but you get really good at not getting heel hooked. Um, and the only way you can get good at not getting heel hooked is to have heel hooked on the map. So you've got to infect yourself with the virus, right? So, so, so um, but that, that's my main, that's more important to me than getting good at heel hooks. So, we're going to teach this guy. So here's the how we're going to do it. Brian is going to, Pull his right elbow back over there. Yeah, the other elbow. No, go back. Under, behind your back. Yes. Yeah. And, and sit up on it. Yep. So that's that's one of the most important parts of the move. Okay? If you're not flexible, you'll need to do that. So you pull his elbow back. Now his left hand gonna hold my foot, just on top, press it down, yep. And you take his leg off on the floor. That's why he moved his elbow back. Do it again. If he doesn't move his elbow back, getting that leg off over there is gonna be dramatic a problem for some of you. For some of you it won't, for some of you it will. So like me, I'm not that super flexible rubber guy, so I don't do things like correctly. So, <laughs> so, so you move your elbow back, and then you'll be able to block the foot and take it off. Now that he's there, he can go just get to his knee and face build, and then he rolls on the spot, 
And then he kicked my knee there and pulled his foot out. And now, now stay there, he pulls his feet inside. <coughs> Uh-oh. He started to do the ashy girl. Go on. But no, the Just start with the basic ashy. And then we'll, we'll call it this. We'll upgrade to the inside one. And then on here, oh, this foot should be underneath your other one. No, no, no. This foot underneath this one. And this one underneath mine. Because then, then everything's protected. Okay? So, so I've got a problem now, so I've got to go up here. So it doesn't require any flexibility. If I was like, that's a drama. Right? So I just turn it back here. Go there. Go there. Don't even look for his leg. Find your own leg. Because if you find your own leg, it'll lead to his leg. And then I kick it. Okay? And now when I when I do that, he opens his legs up and my feet are already pummeled. So it's a kind of a good drill because it's teaching me the pummel, it teaches me the upgrade, and it teaches the escape. So it's starting to turn into something interesting. Okay? And then Brian elbow, block, clears it, goes to his knee, finds his own leg, runs down there, kicks me, clears his knee out of the knee line, I open up my legs, he's inside and he's already doing the ashi to run. So this you, you see, you imagine that you don't know that, and then you're doing all these big blocks. This is, like, you've got to do things in the right order. I remember when I was at school, I remember one of the first dramas I had with my teachers was, um, you know, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. And I went, why? <laughs> and because they, they were asking us to remember them in that order, and I went, why? And it was, shut up, do it. And I went, no. I can't do it. Why? Like, why? I didn't get it. What I was trying to say, and I was a kid, like six, so I didn't have the words, so I couldn't explain my thing. What I was saying is, why, why that order? Are we going by color, size, weight, mass? Are we, is it the numbers of letters? Uh, you know, like, I, I don't know, why? I mean, obviously, it's order from the sun. That's all. But I didn't know that. <laughs> that was not explained to me. <laughs> and there was my picture, so I, why? I think that's a good question. It wasn't even alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, right? Um, and then my dad went down and bashed that teacher, so that was all right. <laughs> but, but um, you know, we, we need to understand uh, like things. There is an ideal order from your alienate perspective, from an ideal order. It's got, it's got to make sense. We don't just want to go, well, just random, you know. We, so I'm not saying that's the right order. It could, we could go by mass, but I don't care. As long as there's a rationale behind it, then my brain goes, oh, okay, you know, it's got, a, it's got a rule that lives there that explains, you know, what I'm doing. So that's what we're trying to do here, right? Make sure we understand these things in the right order rather than just going, I could just show you a whole bunch of crazy lip off. That one, you probably wouldn't remember it in a week. Two, it would make sense to learn. That, that, the difficulty you're having there would have not happened had you done this basic version here. We've seen that plenty of that many too, right? Because I learned crucifix before I learned now. <laughs> before I learned back control. Now it would have been way better how I learned back control and then learned crucifix. That would have made my life so much easier. <laughs> I've learned about eight years. Probably the first four drills. Because I think that gives you enough, um, you know, basic movements to now we can say, okay, let's talk about the ears, on, you know, and ten different ways to get there, and what to do, and how to make it worse to him. Um, but I wouldn't want to do that before I got those drills. So I think those drills would be a really good starting point after leg bars. I still do leg bars first because I think that's much simpler. It's a simpler concept than this. You can see that's all. There's knees happening. It's Pressures, we don't expect that this. So, um, got that, ashy to ashy, dust to dust. <laughs> um, ashy to ashy seated, ashy to ashy standing, uh, and the triple, and then the counter drill, which is teaching you the ashy to inside ashy, the escape from inside ashy, and then winning the leg pummel to set you up to the ashy. So, there's quite a bit of information in. That'd be good. That, that was my favourite little drill to do. 
you know, if I had to pick one lead drill, that would be one. I would pick that one. Now what? Okay, I'll show you the gold standard for the inside Russian imperial book. Okay, now. So I've got the Ashigarami. Right, so we can get this from, you can imagine, you can get that from anywhere later on. And from there, you know how to get the inside sure. sheet, but I know it's going to escape, so I grab the foot. Thank you. And then take that out. So take it out. Put it under the other foot. Now, no can do that. Can't roll out. Both of my feet are projected. He's not going anywhere. He'll go. So that's, that's what... That's the Russians like, that's what they all dream of. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So it's just like this. It's actually pretty easy. It looks complicated, but it's not if we've got a base. We need to start there, right? We started very simple position, and we all know how to upgrade. And we all we all agree that this here is better than the other one because both of my feet are projected now. But we know that he's going to get away. So what we're going to do is go, no, nope, you're not going anywhere. Now we take this foot out, over, under our other one. Then we get on our side and go butt to butt, like that. Because that will make that hole smaller if you're the tall guy. Because if you're the tall guy, that, that hole will be too big, he'll pull his foot out. Okay? So, so that's important to make the hole. <coughs> and then I'm just going to go heel hook. Do you want me to do the heel hook or do other things? <laughs> no, I mean. No. <laughs> <laughs> it feels very vulnerable right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Put that in your speech. <laughs> 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 you're going to make me such a mistake. I mean, Stacey with you too. Oh my God. You asked for it. Okay, so the other step with the heel hook. We're basically we're going to listen to the heel hook. So with the heel hook, you see his foot's like that. So here's the little points. Look, you don't, here's the mistake I made with the heel hook. So I'm just going to knock you over your hands the mistake I made for a few years. Is fishing for the heel with my bicep. You pull the toes into your back with your elbow. Freeze it and only bring your hand forward. You see the difference between doing that? So, elbow back and glue his toes to your back. Imagine if someone's got hold of my elbow behind me, so I can't, I can't bring my elbow forward anymore. Only my hand comes forward and I catch the heel. And then, other hand comes in, gable grip. And now, you don't rotate. You turn his foot under the floor to his butt. So it's a kimura. It's a kimura on his foot. Does that make sense? Okay. So elbow to my back. So keep my elbow back like that and just bring my hand forward. See, like I'll, I'll do you, I'll show you how he can try being in there. I'm gonna save all this bullshit. So pull my hip, uh, elbow back, hook the heel, lay down, get the gable grip, don't rotate. Um, you see I'm going under the ground. Like, like that. So the way he can show me is like this. <laughs> Done. <laughs> the drills, right? The drills. What were the drills? One. Ashi to Ashi. Um, seated. Seated. Two. Ashi to Ashi standing. Uh, three, what was it? <coughs> the triple. And four was the? Escape. Escape drill. Okay, the escape drill. Cool. Escape drill. So we did those drills, which set us up a little bit now. Because see, you had to like appreciate the escape possibility to appreciate why the hell we're doing what we just did. Grab the floor to stop that. So you see why there is an order. I mean, I'm not saying it's always subjective, like your order might be different, right? but it's, it, it, put it this way, there's some orders are way better than other, other ones. So, so that, that just set us up for just a combination. And our little 
combo there, combo, we'll call it combo one, was, um, what was it? Ashy, ashy to inside. Two, inside, inside. inside ashy. Two, leg grab. Leg, leg grab. I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's called the Russian knot nowadays, which is good. When I, when I learned this, it was just called the footlock. There was only footlock, arm lock, choke, or sweep. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing else. Um, one more thing now. I'll give you another combination. And the reason I'm going to do this next combination is to show you a relationship to tie in the leg bars with this thing. Because I want to see, I want you to see a pathway from the left. Any leg bar you do, you can start to get into this whole game. See, we've done two games, right? We started out with a leg bar game, and now we're talking about an Ashigarani game. And what I would like to do tonight is connect those two things up. But then I think I've done a, a pretty good job of introducing you to that world. Not saying you don't know, I'm probably not know as well these things, I guess. But it's, it's just the way I would do it now. So, so now, a random combination. Um, Phil, why don't I hurt you? <laughs> okay. So I used to like this, doing this. I'll go on the side. So I go. Knee right, hands on the shoulder. He starts to escape the knee right and turn. I go, thank you, Phil. All right, back step. Now I just get the. So it'll be easy for you to do because now you know the ingredients, but there's nothing strange yet. Right? So we're here. The way I like to get knee right is I switch my base. And I do that. Because if I jump up here and he. Puts his knee inside, he'll win the race. If he's quick. So as I go up, his knee comes in. So switch my base, weight on this hand, and with it. Hands on the shoulders, he starts to turn. I put myself in the quarter guard and back step. And you're all good at that, but you did it before. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to block the triangle. Agree? Now, if he turns towards me, what am I going to do? Leg bar. But he's smart. He doesn't want to do that. He turns the other way. He's going to go one or the other. So anytime, anytime you have a leg bar and the guy turns his knee away from you, look where we are. So, do you understand? So, if he turns towards me, I'll happily take the leg bar. But he doesn't want to have his knee facing you, so he wants to turn his knee away. And all you do is a swim, a swim, and you're going to get the right where you now. Now you start to sort of see uh, the relationships between them. I'm no expert at this thing. It's complicated, and I'm, I was crap when I learned it anyway. And it was a long, long time ago. But I still think it's relevant um, now. Okay. Um, anyway. That's a pretty good start. Because I remember when I made those connections, oh, well, cool, yeah, yeah, I'd like to see how these things connect up. 